hey guys what's up so this is a video of polity series and uh, we have already talked about preamble and introduction and schedules and we have also done citizenship and the part one of the constitution so we will be dealing with the part three of the indian constitution that is article 12 to article 35 which deals with fundamental rights that will be 3.1 this is the youtube channel an academy and it is presented by me that is me so i'll be te teaching you something before we start so article 12 article 13 they do not deal with fundamental rights per se okay article 12 deals with the definition of state what is state and article 13 what is law similarly we have article 32 which is a fundamental rights but it is not a right per se it is right for the rights that is right to constitutional remedies then there is article 33 one which deals with 31a that is related to estates and 31b which deals with the ninth schedule and 31c which deals with dpsp so article 31 it deals with those rights which will not be those laws which will not be violated solely on the ground that they violate certain fundamental rights is that understood then we have article 33 and article 34 and article 35 so article 35 deals with the parliament will have the power to enact certain laws for the fulfillment of fundamental rights article 34 it deals with the martial law that is the military law when it will be applicable and finally article 33 deals with police paramilitary forces navy army etc and when there will be restrictions on fundamental rights of those personnels apart from this that is article 14 to 31 or rather 32 so they are the actually what are fundamental rights so 14 to 13 are like actual fundamental rights 31 was there earlier but now it has been repealed that was right to property and article 32 is related to right to constitutional remedy since this now we have got this out of the picture so let's start with the lecture so if you want to read more about me you can just google it or you can read on facebook that is facebook.com slash official and do like the page do like the video do like the channel and share it as much as you can you also have to message me your query in the comment section on youtube as well as on the facebook how does that help see that helps because you will not be able to ask your doubts in any other way so i will if majority of the people are asking a particular doubt so i will be taking care of them in the next forthcoming videos so anyways moving forward <coughs> we start with the basics of the fundamental rights so it is covered in the part 3 of the indian constitution if you have not read part 1 part 2 preamble introduction and schedules so preamble introduction and schedules these six videos have already been covered by me so this is covered under article 12 to article 35 it has largely been incorporated from bills of rights of usa constitution written way back 225 years ago it is also called as a magna carta of indian constitution because it is justiciable or enforceable in a court of law so this is the major difference that is why it is called as the magna carta and this is the most elaborate fundamental rights description in entire world in the entire world ours is the most elaborate fundamental rights see they do not do any discrimination on the basis of color uh, religion sex etc so there is no discrimination among the citizens of india there will be discrimination between citizens and non-citizens of india it upholds the equality of all individuals it upholds the dignity of the individual it upholds the larger public interest as well as the unity of the nation so it is more or less the preamble of our constitution just remember it and just write it down just remember preamble by heart and you will be able to solve 10% of the polity questions. Write them everywhere. Promote the ideal of political democracy. This is also important. What do you mean by political democracy is that we have like one person one vote that is the most basic form. However, like the state should not usurp extra legislative or extra powers among it. The branch there should be separation of power as well as citizens should be given certain basic inalienable rights which are extremely important for their development so it prevent the establishment of an authoritarian despotic rule in the country and it protect the liberties and freedom of the people against the invasion by the state it also aim at establishing a government of law that is law is supreme that is rule of law not rule 
of men so rule of law has three components that is supremacy of law that is no one is above the law no arbitrariness in the execution of the law all classes are subjected to the same law classes to same law and finally the third component is impartial and powerful impartial and powerful judiciary so these are the three components of rule of law this is a concept by professor dicey so anyways moving forward why fundamental rights are fundamental because they cover the basic or fundamental needs of the citizen first point then they are guaranteed and protected by the constitution which itself is the fundamental law of the land okay second point it forms the backbone it forms the core it forms the skeleton it forms the soul of the constitution along with dpsp that is directive principles of state policy and they are the most essential for the all round development that is material development uh, spiritual development moral intellectual political social economic whatever you want to call you call it and for the individuals that is why it's called as fundamental then originally there were seven fundamental rights however right to property is gone also article 19 clause 1 sub clause f is also gone so these two rights contained the property it had positive connotation that is person including aliens can acquire property and right to property persons including alien cannot be deprived of their property except by law both of them are gone by 44 and 78 that is 1978 44th constitutional amendment act 4 plus 4 is 8 so 1978 then we have right to equality that is article 14 to 18 then we have right to freedom 19 20 21 22 right against exploitation 23 24 freedom of religion 25 28 and cultural and educational rights 29 to 30 and finally the most important article of indian constitution according to father of indian constitution dr b r ambedkar is the right to constitutional remedy it is the right to enforce right since itself is fundamental supreme court cannot refuse you to entertain the right so right to property was deleted by 44th amendment act and now it is made legal act under 300a in part 12 of the constitution so there are only six fundamental rights major six fundamental rights and now it is a legal right so features of fundamental rights some are available only to citizens like 15 16 19 29 30 i've already done this in citizenship chapter again it is a revision the rest are available to both citizens and aliens except enemy alien what is an enemy alien enemy alien is a person who is a citizen of a country who at present india is at war with is that understood so we have to be at war at that particular time to call a citizen of that country an enemy alien it is not absolute what it is qualified what do you mean by it there will be certain reasonable restrictions like there is nothing called as absolute liberty there is nothing called as absolute right so reasonable restrictions which is decided by court whether it's reasonable or not to strike a balance between rights of individual liberty and social control so most area against states arbitrary actions it will be dealing with only only against states action not individuals action most of the fundamental rights so whenever private individuals violate them there are no constitutional remedy but only ordinary legal remedy so some are negative rights that is place limitation on state that is right against untouchability right against exploitation right against employment right against discrimination while others are positive in nature example right to education etc etc right to life in its wider interpretation then justiciable that is allowing the persons to move to the supreme court or high court whichever they want to for their enforcement because supreme court is the ultimate guarantor and defender of the fundamental rights i'll come to it later they are not sacrosanct and permanent various amendments have happened recently cooperatives was also introduced in the fundamental rights article 19 so as recently as 2 years ago there was a amendment in fundamental rights change can be done by constitutional amendment acts because fundamental rights itself are not the part of the basic structure of the constitution then uh, soul is the part of the constitution but individual rights can be amended they can be suspended during national emergency under article 352 only three grounds are there war external aggression and internal disturbance was removed by the term armed rebellion please make sure you know that so except article 20 and 21 which deals with the right to life and 
uh, right to person who have been arrested they can be suspended during national emergency now six rights of article 19 can be suspended only when emergency is declared on the ground of war or external aggression and not on the ground of armed rebellion it's important so they are limited by article 31a 31b 31c already done so you can read a state ninth schedule and directive principles so similarly article 33 is relating to armed forces paramilitary forces police intelligence and similar services fundamental rights are restricted while martial law that is military law under abnormal circumstances to restore order is in force it is not national emergency we will come to it also and mostly it is directly enforceable self-executory is that understood while certain rights like 21a that is right to education it can be enforced on the basis of law for giving effect to them that is parliament will have to come with right to education act which like the amendment happened in 2002 but the act was passed 10 years down the line so when the state have the resources then these fundamental rights will be made a law and it can only be done by parliament under article 35 and not state legislature to ensure a uniform standard in the entire nation so moving forward we deal with article 33 it deals with armed forces and fundamental rights so article 33 it empowers the parliament to restrict or abrogate the fundamental rights of armed forces similarly similarly etc etc it includes employees who are non-combatants like tailor cook etc they are also included in it it is done for proper discharge of their duties agar wo sare apne rights maangne lag jaye that is right to join union right to travel right to have a profession and right to what not they cannot form unions and all they cannot be part of trade unions they cannot just migrate to any other part they cannot just abandon their duty so for proper discharge of their duty and the maintenance of discipline this is required and under law only parliament can make laws to give the effect to them it's already given and it cannot be challenged on violation of any of the fundamental rights especially under article 19 so parliamentary law elected under article 33 can also exclude the court martials from the red jurisdictions provided it enforcement of fundamental rights is concerned so even supreme court and high court cannot issue red jurisdiction if the enforcement of certain problematic areas fundamental rights is concerned article 34 deals with martial law first thing first martial law is not described anywhere in the indian constitution so it imposes restriction on fundamental rights while martial law is in force martial law simply means military law so martial law is military law it is not defined in indian constitution it empowers the parliament to indemnify that is compensate or forgive any government servant or others for any act done by him for maintenance and restoration of order while martial law was in force in that particular area martial law will never be coming in force in entire india it will only be in a particular area so act of indemnity made by parliament beyond judicial review only it cannot be questioned in a court of law only on violation of fundamental rights in this case civil administration is run by military authorities who have their own rules they have their own court they have their own government and there is suspension of ordinary law courts and government so it is imposed under extraordinary circumstances obviously like war invasion insurrection rebellion etc etc and the to use force by force for maintaining and restoring order abnormal powers are being given including imposing restrictions and regulations on the rights of the civilians they can punish the civilian and even condemn them to death supreme court says that even if martial law is there it does not mean habeas corpus will not active there has to be certain laws which ex exclusively prohibits habeas corpus only then it will be in suspension so difference with respect to national emergency see it only affects fundamental rights while national emergency affects central state relationship legislative powers revenue and also fundamental rights it suspends ordinary law courts and government it continues in national emergency obviously government will continue in national emergency military law or martial law restore the breakdown of law due to any reason it can be imposed due to any reason while national emergency under article 352 can be imposed only on war external aggression or armed rebellion a martial law is always imposed only in some area of the country and national emergency some area or entire country and it is not specifically mentioned so it is implicit that is martial law while national emergency is explicitly mentioned under article 352
then we have article 35 that is laws for affecting fundamental rights only parliament can make laws only power to make laws to give effect to fundamental rights is only in parliament not in state legislature even if it comes under state list to ensure uniform standard throughout india so like in article 16 for employment purposes residents can be prescribed as a condition for discrimination only by parliament under article 32 any other court can also be asked to give writs apart from supreme court and high court if parliament wants then under article 33 obviously i have dealt and under article 4 also only parliament can make laws parliament can also make laws for prescribing punishment for those acts that are declared to be offenses under fundamental rights so just because there is right to untouchability under article 17 it does not mean that parliament will not make a law for that punishment to be actually exercised in real life if just fundamental right is violated there has to be certain law for that so that punishment can be given similarly in trafficking in human beings and labor there has to be an under article 23 and those laws which are made before independence will continue as such unless and uh, otherwise they are contradictory to the fundamental rights and in that case they will be modified by the parliament and only then they will not they will cease to exist so anyways i guess you i hope you like the lecture so if you want me to make part 2 on fundamental rights uh i thought it's a very very important portion it is the most important portion in indian constitution and for pre or mains or as well as for interview it comes in handy if you know the fundamental rights so if yes then comment and let me know so thank you for watching the video this is the youtube channel do like share and subscribe and this is the twitter handle at roman sani this is the facebook page facebook.com slash my name roman sani dot official have an awesome day thank you for watching it